In this example, we are going to be using the API generator to take data out of our properties data model and display this data in the front end of our application. The final application, when launched, is going to look like this. Let's start by deleting all of the components on the page so we can see how we build up this particular table and what attributes we need to give to that table in order to display our data. So to start with, there's a quick recap. We have a properties data model. This contains an address field with the address of the property in it, a title, which is a title field of the property, a list of attachments, which are pictures of the properties, numbers of guests that are allowed to be at the property or that the property can accommodate, and a price column for how much it costs to stay at the property each night. Using the API generator button, we're able to create an API for basic CRUD functionality. This will allow us to create new properties, retrieve individual properties, retrieve a collection of properties, update the details associated with a particular property, or delete a particular property from our data model. If you haven't already done this, you can press submit now, and this is gonna create a series of endpoints actions and events, as well as front-end user workflows. To see these, you can go into your endpoints tab and you'll see that you have options to get one property, get multiple properties, create properties, update properties, and also to delete properties. As always, each endpoint is associated with an action, which is the channel which connects the endpoint to your particular data model. So expanding the Actions tab, you can see here that we've got corresponding actions for get one property, get all properties, create properties, update and delete properties. Similarly, on the front end of the application, we have workflows that are connecting to our endpoints, which are then connecting to our actions, which are connecting to our data models. So on the front end of our application, once we click that API generator button, you've got all these different workflows that have been created. So you've got get one property, get properties, create properties, update and delete properties. In order then to display the data that's contained within this table, this properties model on our page, the first thing we need to do is we need to add a particular set of components to the page to hold the data. So the first thing that I'm gonna add is a container item, which I can drag and drop onto the page. I'm then going to collect a table component and drag that inside my container. Now I've got one, two, three columns by default, but we have space here for an address, a title, pictures, number of guests and price. So there's five columns here. One, two, three, four, five. So what I can do is I can add additional columns to this table by pressing the add table column button until I have five columns displayed along the top. Notice here you've got column one, two, three, four, and five. So now what I want to do is I want to give titles to those columns, which I'm going to type in to indicate what information is going to be displayed within that particular column. So for here, we've got address, title, pictures, number of guests, and price. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to double click on the cell, and I'm going to do address, title, pictures, number of guests, and price. So now if I select the underlying cells here, what I could do is I could type out the information that's contained within this data model. So for example, I could type in Guy Concordia as the address column, and that would be a statically added value to the front end. However, what I want to do in this case is I want to run a workflow which is going to actually retrieve the data that's contained within my data model. This means that if anyone adds a new record to my data model, then this will be automatically reflected within the table on the front end of my application as well. So to do this, what I can do is I can select the table row itself and I can use the concept of a repeating group where I will bind this particular row to 
a variable which has been automatically generated by the API generator. In this case, I picked the data zero collection variable uh, and I press OK here. So now that this row is bound to that data zero collection variable, what this means is that this row is going to return a collection of records from my properties data model. So it's going to return every single row of that data model. So the challenging thing here is that just because I have the row of data that's coming back, I need to actually specify in which cell I want a particular value to sit. So for example, if I return an entire row of data here, how does the row know to insert the address into the address column? Well, the way this works is that you can select this little cog icon and then you're going to select the text item here, select variable, and you'll see that an option has become available for a repeating group. So that repeating group is the actual row of data that's being returned from your user's properties data model. So if I select that row, I can then select address on here, and that's going to give me the actual row and address for that particular column. I can do the same thing with the title by again clicking on the cog, expanding this out, taking the variable and selecting the um, title from here. Um, now for the images, uh, the image component will require us to have um, an image component added to this particular cell. But because the uh, attachments column within our properties data model can store multiple images, what we need to do is we need to specify which image, if there were multiple images, could be stored within this particular column. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a div block to this particular uh, cell here. And then I'm going to take an image component. I'm going to put that inside that div block. So I'm going to select here an image component and then put that inside the div block. Now if I use the breadcrumb trail and I go up to the div block, it will become a little bit clearer what I mean. So here I can say that I want to put in my repeating group, I want to select my images field, right? So this is going to return an entire collection, or if you're a more technical person, an array of images, since this can be multiple attachments within this particular field here. You see, I can add additional images like so. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this image uh, and this image is part of a repeating group. Um, so I'm going to come inside here. I'm going to select a variable and you'll see then that another option becomes available here, which is a row for a system custom model. So this is a special type of repeating group and I'm going to pick the image URL. So the image URL is the link to the image that's on our back end and I'm going to press OK there like that. Next I'm going to come over to the number of guests and I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to select the text, I'm going to pick my repeating group and I'm going to select the number of guests. And lastly I'm going to select the price component. Here I'm going to take a variable again, select the repeating group and take the price. If I wanted to add uh, the dollar sign ahead of the price I can just add another label here. To, the, uh, to my chart and I can just replace this label here by double clicking on it with a dollar sign. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this image and I'm just going to resize it uh, so that it only takes up 50% as a maximum width uh, of the um, container that it's uh, within. So that will mean that it's not going to look kind of like a uh, really large uh, when we build our app and test in a second. So now, uh, hopefully, if I click on the container element, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a workflow. So the workflow that here I'm going to attach is I'm going to say that when I click on this container, I'm going to run a workflow to go and get a collection of properties. So it's going to get properties out of my, um, out of my uh, properties data model. So if we just take a very quick look at what that actually is doing, um, so we can search here for that particular workflow, the get properties one, and expand that here. You'll see that when we click on a particular component, in this case the container, we're going to run an endpoint. So the endpoint that we're going to run 
if I select this, is the get properties endpoint. So the logic is I click on the component, it's then going to run an endpoint. The endpoint that it runs is the get properties endpoint. So that's going to come down to this tab over here, which is the endpoints tab. And the, uh, and the system is going to start uh, the get properties endpoint here. Right, so it's going to start this endpoint. This endpoint is connected to an action, which is the channel, which is going to eventually connect to our data model. So in this case, if I go over to the actions tab, I can see that I've got a get properties action here. So if I select this get properties action, you can see that this is being triggered by the endpoint get properties. And what it's doing is it's getting a response variable, which is called data, which is looking inside the properties data model and is actually retrieving the data out of the properties data model. Once we have these, this variable populated, this variable is being returned to the endpoint, which is then returning a response back up to the workflow. And you can see here you've got a response as, which is a get properties endpoint response as. After that, we're just checking here in this conditional statement that the endpoint has run successfully. And then we're setting the field, which means we are pushing the response, the get endpoint response as variable. And we're sticking that inside our data zero variable, which if you recall, is the variable that we bound this particular table row to as a repeating group. So you've got here the data zero here. So now if I build and click on this particular thing, that entire workflow is going to run. So that's everything that's going on in the background. So here I'm going to build the code. So I'm going to generate the code. And after the code is generated, I'm going to press the preview button up here. And that's going to load my application directly into Amazon Web Services. And the last thing then to do is to click on the actual container itself in order to run the workflow. So I click on the container and you'll see that we get the results returned to the front end of our application. So what we've done is we've now taken data that's within our user's data model and we've taken that data and we've pushed it into the front end of our application.